Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jeff Ricketts. A very warm welcome to shareholders and guests present today at the 2021 annual shareholder meeting of Heartland Group Holdings Limited. I will provide you with instructions on how to vote and ask questions as we progress through the meeting. If you encounter any issues, please refer to the virtual annual meeting online portal guide or phone the helpline 0800 200 220. Since the quorum is present, I declare the meeting open. I will now outline the agenda of the business for today's meeting. As chair of the board, I will shortly introduce you to the board of directors and the strategic management group who are joining us from various locations across New Zealand and Australia. I will then take you through the formalities of the meeting before I provide a high level overview of Heartland's performance and activities in the 2021 financial year. This will be followed by an address from Heartland's Chief Executive Officer, Jeff Greenslade, who will provide you with more detailed performance overview of Heartland's business and an update on Heartland's current strategic objectives. Following this, there will be an opportunity to answer any questions you may have concerning Heartland's performance, strategy or operations. I encourage shareholders attending online to begin to submit their questions now to assist us in answering as many of these as we can at the appropriate time. Thereafter, we will move to the formal business of the meeting, including voting on the resolutions posed to you today. Firstly, I'd like to um, introduce and acknowledge the directors. As directors are joining us from various locations today, I'll be in, begin with introducing the Heartland Group and Bank Directors who are with me today in Auckland, followed by Christchurch and then Australia. First of all, it's my pleasure to welcome Sir Christopher Mace, who has been a Director of Heartland since its establishment. Next to me on my right, John Harvey, who has been a Director of Heartland Bank since its establishment. Next to John, Shelley Ruhr. Shelley was appointed a Director of Heartland Bank in January 2020. Joining us from Christchurch, we have Jeff Greenslade, our Chief Executive Officer. Jeff has held this role since Heartland's establishment in January 2011 and as a Director of both companies. Greg Tomlinson, our Deputy Chair of the Heartland Group. Greg was appointed a Director in March 2013. Bruce Irvine, our Chair of Heartland Bank Board. Bruce has been a Director since establishment. Kate Mitchell. Kate has been a Director of Heartland Bank since March 2019 and was appointed to the Heartland Group Board at the start of this month. And joining us from Australia, Ellie Comerford. Hi, Ellie. Mm -hmm. Ellie was appointed as a director of Heartland in January 2017. And Jeff Summerhays. Jeff was appointed a director of Heartland Group at the start of the month. For myself, I have been a director of Heartland since establishment of the bank, and I'm on both boards. In addition to Jeff Greenslade, other members of Heartland Strategic Management Group are also present today. In Auckland, we have on my left, Chris Flood, Chief Executive of Heartland Bank, and Andrew Dixon, who is the Chief Financial Officer for the group. And online, we have Laura Byrne, our Chief Operating Officer, and Lydia Solkofi, our Chief Digital Officer. Michael Drum, Chief Risk Officer, is currently on leave and unable to join us today. And Kira Willow, Chief People and Brand Experience Officer, is currently on parental leave and unable to join us today. Returning to the business of the meeting, I advise that all valid proxies and postal votes received from shareholders within the prescribed time have been admitted. I can confirm that a total of 818 proxies and postal votes have been accepted. This represents 
1,222,000 shares and some odd numbers, um, which represents 20.69 of the total issued shares in Hartland Group Holdings. I can say that all resolutions before us today, approximately 84% of those proxy and poster votes are in favour. Turning to meeting procedures. This is a meeting of Heartland Group Holdings Limited shareholders. Accordingly, while our guests are very welcome to witness the proceedings of the meeting, participation in the shareholder discussion and the business of the meeting is confined to ordinary shareholders present online by proxy or by authorised representative. In regard to voting procedures for today's meeting, all resolutions will be decided by way of a poll. This is in line with the practice increasingly adopted for listed companies and is the preferred method of NZX and the New Zealand Shareholders Association. By having resolutions decided by way of a poll, we are counting all postal votes, proxy votes and votes online. For those shareholders attending the meeting online today, you will be able to cast your vote using the electronic voting card received when your online registration is validated. You would have received. To vote, you will need to click Get Voting Card within the online meeting platform. You will be asked to enter your shareholder or proxy number to validate. Please then mark your voting card in the way you wish to vote by clicking for, against or abstain on the voting card. Once you have made your selection, please click submit vote on the bottom of the card to lodge your vote. Please refer to the virtual meeting online portal guide or phone helpline 0800 200 220 if you require assistance. Voting will remain open for five minutes after the conclusion of the meeting. The notice calling this meeting was dispatched to shareholders on the 27th of September 2021. That notice outlined the formal business for this meeting and also provided some background information on each resolution to be voted on. The minutes of the last annual meeting held on the 30th of November have been approved and confirmed by directors as is our custom. A digital version of those minutes is available on Heartland's shareholder website at shareholders.heartland.co.nz. I will now share with you my Chair's address before inviting Jeff Greenslade to address you. We will then move to shareholder discussion. Please ensure you submit your questions now to allow us to answer any of those in time. It's quite warm in here. <clears throat> Throughout the year, COVID-19 pandemic has continued to present challenges for our customers, communities and our business. It has changed the environment in which we are all operating. As we face continued uncertainty with restrictions in travel and gatherings, and with your health and safety a priority, Heartland will again today host this year's annual general meeting online. I am proud of the way in which Heartland and our customers have responded to the economic and social impacts that have resulted from COVID-19, especially as the situation continues to evolve. Heartland's priority remains on supporting our customers, ensuring the health and well-being of our employees, and delivering exceptional value for you, our shareholders. In the financial year ended 30 June 2021, I am pleased to report that Heartland achieved a net profit after tax of 87 million. On an underlying basis, which excludes impacts of one-offs, the net profit after tax was 87.9 million, an increase of 11 million over the prior year. This is another strong result for Heartland and it continues to deliver against its strategy to provide best or only products. Heartland grew its finance receivables by 8% to 
to $5 billion during the year as a result of the strong performance across asset finance, motor and reverse mortgages. Reverse mortgages in New Zealand saw a record year for the business, up 30.4% from the previous financial year. The New Zealand portfolio was also pleased to achieve a consumer trusted accreditation for the reverse mortgage business for the fifth year in a row. Australian reverse mortgages also achieved significant milestones, including the achievement of various awards and its loan book surpassing A dollars, $1 billion in Australia. Heartland Bank was once again named CanStar's 2021 Bank of the Year Savings for the fourth consecutive year, which awards were also given for its direct call and you choose accounts. Importantly, significant progress continued towards Heartland's digitalisation goals. With Jeff Breenstade will speak to this in more detail later. Progress has been made in Heartland's sustainability journey, and we are pleased to announce that our absolute reported greenhouse gas emissions for 2020 was 17% lower than for our 2019 emissions. This is a very great step towards our goal, which is to reduce 2019 baseline emissions by 35% by 2025. Turning to credit ratings, earlier this month, Heartland's rating agency Fitch affirmed the credit ratings for Heartland and Heartland Bank at treble B and Heartland Australia at treble B minus with the outlook remaining stable for all three companies. Heartland Bank remains one of only two Australasian banks to have no reduction or adverse change in its rating or outlook since January 2020, despite the impacts of COVID-19. That's a very good outcome for us at Heartland. Mm -hmm. Dividends. We paid a fully imputed final dividend of seven cents per share on the 15th of September this year. Together with the interim dividend of four cents per share, the total dividend for the year was 11 cents per share. This compares to seven cents per share in 2020, which admittedly was affected by the Reserve Bank rules on dividends. Hartland is pleased to be able to deliver a shareholder return, notwithstanding the dividend rest restrictions imposed by the Reserve Bank on distributions by banks in New Zealand. The total shareholder return, or TSR, was 107.2% for the five-year period 20 August 16 to 20 August 2021, compared to the TSR of 81.9% for the NZX50 during the same period. This is a great result for our shareholders. Conduct and culture. Heartland's commitment to doing the right thing for customers is reflected in the social impact of our products, the way in which we conduct our business, and in one of our core values, mahi tika, or do the right thing. During the year, Heartland continued to support customers affected by COVID-19. This support included providing more than 150 business customers with access to the New Zealand Government's Business Finance Guarantee Scheme, and providing consumer and business customers with additional repayment flexibility through our Heartland Extend product, which we offered. Heartland launched its conduct and culture work plan in 2020, following the recommendation that came from the 2018 Financial Markets Authority and Reserve Bank of New Zealand Review of Conduct and Culture in New Zealand Retail Banks. Heartland's work plan was completed in, Feb in financial year 2021 and included initiatives such, as, initiatives such as the creation of internal digital resource to support the provision of good outcomes for our customers, improved tools and reporting for customer feedback, and the development of an alert within our core banking system to help identify customers who are experiencing vulnerabilities. Also, is that we can mitigate the possibility issues before they occur. 
Heartland Bank recently became a national foundation for the death and heart of hearing first hearing accredited workplace in New Zealand. The accreditation is established to enable us to better support customers who are deaf or hard of hearing. Supporting our communities, the Heartland Trust is an independent registered charitable trust which is closely supported by Heartland and is a shareholder in Heartland. During the year, the Heartland Trust made grants totalling over 448,000 to support our communities, including in the areas of education, sport and well-being. Through 2020 and part of 2021, many organisations or groups the Trust supports were impacted by COVID-19 lockdowns. <clears throat> Some are currently experiencing this as COVID-19 alert levels have allowed. It has been fantastic to Fantastic to see rugby teams returning to the field, scholarship recipients able to connect with their cohort in person, and festivals run as planned. The Heartland Trust continues to be a proud supporter of the InZone Education Foundation, a registered charitable trust that aims to enhance the educational outcomes for Māori and Pacifica youth. A number of InZone students have participated in our Manawa Ako internship programme and are now working in permanent roles at Heartland or have continued on in tertiary education. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the Heartland Trust also continued its funding support for the Auckland University Coupes Leadership Scholarship the Auckland Writers' Festival, Word Christchurch Festival, Auckland City Mission, Lifeline, and a number of both boys and girls first 15 rugby teams across the country. <clears throat> Turning to the group's outlook, the board is confident Heartland's ability to deliver growth and profitability as it continues to deliver against a strategy to provide friction frictionless service at the lowest cost. Reducing Heartland's cost to income ratio and passing on the benefits to our customers through lower pricing. Noting uncertainties associated with the ongoing impacts of COVID-19, Heartland expects the net profit after tax for the year ending 30 June 2022 to be in the range of 93 to 96 million. Board changes. There are three, direction, three directors up for re-election this year. Earlier this year, Amy, Ali Comerford resigned her directorship of Heartland Bank, but continues as a very valued director of our parent company, Heartland Group. She chairs the Heartland Group Audit and Risk Committee. Ali is a strong board contributor and having a broad financial experience in Australia will assist us in the growth of our business over there. Jeff Summerhays has recently, or very recently, been appointed to our board and is a professional director and senior advisor with extensive commercial and regulatory experience. He is our second Australia-based director and is recognised as a global leader on climate change, financial risk and regulatory matters through his work at the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority also known as APRA. Finally, Kate Mitchell has been a director of Heartland Bank since March 2019, and she will continue in the role of Heartland Bank, but will bring her considerable banking and experience internationally to the Heartland Board as she joins the Heartland Group Board. Finally, I would like to take a few minutes to acknowledge and thank Sir Christopher Mace for his very valuable contribution to Heartland Group. Sir Chris is today retiring from the board after having been a Heartland director since the company's inception a decade ago. In that decade on from the merger of Canterbury and Southern Cross Building Societies with Merrick Finance, the Heartland Group has trebled the size of its loan book and achieved a more than tenfold lift in annual profit. In recent days, the share price hit $2.39 valuing Heartland at over 1.3 billion. When Heartland first listed on the New Zealand Stock Exchange a decade ago, the shares were worth 88 cents each, which valued the group at 264 million. 
Accordingly, in that decade, over a billion dollars of shareholder value has been created by Heartland during Sir Chris's board tenure. Sir Chris has made a significant contribution, not only to the establishment of Heartland, but with his wide experience in guiding the business to where it is today. Sir Chris, we thank you for your service. I'm delighted to say Sir Chris will continue to have a relationship with the Heartland Group and that has been, he has been appointed Comar Tour to Heartland. Jeff Greenstade will comment on that later. <clears throat> to conclude my address this afternoon, I want to do so by thanking and giving my gratitude to my fellow directors for their wise counsel and support. Thank you too to Jeff Greenslade and Chris Flood and our executive team who continue to provide strong leadership for Heartland through their diverse set of skills. On behalf of the board and executive team, I wish to thank our Heartland employees for their hard work during a challenging year that continued to be impacted by a COVID-19 pandemic. Last but not least, I would like to thank you, our shareholders and customers for supporting Heartland. We appreciate the confidence you place in us and we look forward to continuing, continuing the delivery of strong shareholder returns. Thank you. And I'll now ask Jeff Greenslade to address you from Christchurch. In a mana, in a reo, in a rangatira, tena koto kato. In a iwi mahi, otomoto, fanui katumihi katumihi, kia koto kato, kua hui mai, i tena ra tena tato kato. No mai, no mai, ko Jeff Greenslade aho, te kai whakahare uh, o Heartland. Welcome everybody uh, and thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Jeff Greenslade, the Chief Executive of the group. Um, I just want to make a few comments around some of our strategic focus, particularly in digitalisation. But to begin with, as the Chair uh, outlined, um, Heartland achieved earnings of 87 million in the recently concluded financial year, which was at the top end of the range. And uh, this occurred in another year of challenges, but it was also another year of opportunity. Uh, and as the saying goes, it was a game of two halves. Um, the first half impacted by lockdowns, giving rise to postponement of activity, uh, and in some cases, uh, plans that were put on hold. However, in the main, growth continued return, sorry, in the second half, uh, as COVID concerns eased, and more particularly, we adapted to the new environment. Um, and as they say, ne necessity is the, the mother of invention. We have adapted uh, to the COVID environment, and those behaviours uh, that have uh, reflect those adaptations will continue on. We have embraced remote uh, commerce. Uh, we're all very much more used to remote purchasing through online channels or through the, uh, the near remote ver version of clicking and collect. Um, so the COVID environment has served to hasten the adoptance of the adoption, sorry, of uh, digital commerce. A and this uh, is very much consistent with our plans. Uh, not only were we able to uh, meet our clients' needs during the time of, of the lockdown, we were able to process deposits during uh, level four uh, and motor loans at level three. Uh, it all goes well for the future. Um, it is increasingly Heartland's point of differentiation, and that's just wanted to talk about for a moment. Um, we always, it seems, talk about digitalisation, and we do so because it's very, very critical to our success and it's very important. Our aim is for Heartland to be one of the world's totally uh, banking groups that is fully digitalised um, by 2024. What does this mean? What does it mean to be totally digitalised um, and doesn't everybody claim to be digital? Banks claim to be digital because they have internet banking or a mobile app. However, much of what they ask us to do as customers can't be done digitally. Customers are required to wait in queues to make an appointment or to uh, uh, spend time on the telephone waiting for someone to pick it up. Heartland doesn't have any branches anymore. And yes, we have telephony, but over time, we want to remove the need for customers to call. If customers have to call us, we have failed. This may sound strange, but the reality is telephony-based uh, services, based on the premise that the customer has to shell out his or her precious time waiting for the telephone to be picked up, 
is not consistent with where we think uh, expectations are leading in terms of service standards. Ask yourself, do you wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I think I'll give myself a treat and call the bank today. Uh, I'm sure like me, your heart sinks when you hear the sound of soporific music uh, and the accompanying recorded voice reassuring you how important your call is to, to them. Your call is important, but your needs are greater. And this is the key to digitalization, anticipating customer needs and providing instant self-service via a mobile app. And as I said, it may sound strange, but that's our aspiration for customers, that they don't have to call. We believe that is the future, fast, and immediate and accessible uh, self-service. This leaves our people free to focus more on high value activities, anticipating the needs of customers, getting to them before they even they, they know that they need something via an outbound call or by texting. And digitalization makes this possible. In short, it takes out the hassle, what is known as friction, the things that cause customers delay or inconvenience. And here is the interesting bit. Friction comes at a cost. So by taking out friction, we can become more uh, efficient. And this was demonstrated with our residential mortgage platform offering, which we uh, launched during the course of the last financial year. We were able to offer best-in-class rates because the mortgage was only available online. We recently reached the $100 million mark in loans, and we're now writing upwards of $30 million a month. And this has been achieved without any telephone calls, without meetings, without uh, queuing at branches, totally online. Customer behaviors are adjusting, they are changing. They're moving to online as the preferred way of transacting uh, their financial needs. During the year as an organization, we reached a critical milestone in our digital evolution. When we integrated our platforms, which is our channels to our customers, into the customer business units, this marked a high point of maturity in our journey. Uh, we're effectively making digital mainstream. And as I said earlier, everybody claims to be digital. Our first digital is a board paper, then it's a project, and finally it ends up being a strategy. More advanced businesses like Facebook, Amazon, and Lending Club reach a stage where they no longer have a digital strategy. It becomes ne unnecessary because they are digital. It is integrated. Uh, and that's the stage where we are now reaching. I'd like also now just to turn to sustainability uh, and just sort of reiterate some of the comments that the chairman made, that we've made good progress towards our sustainability goals. Uh, we've had uh, interruptions in terms of regulatory requirements that we've had to attend to uh, uh, and COVID, but we're now uh, on track in terms of our, our journey in terms of reaching our sustainability goals. And we have three sustainability pillars. In the environmental uh, conservation, we have reduced our vehicle fleet size by 7%, reducing greenhouse emissions, and our internal green team continues to drive energy efficiency in our offices and audit our waste management. The chair has spoken to our social equity activity and the work undertaken to complete our conduct and culture work plan. In um, financial year 2021, we're also pleased to have increased the proportion of uh, employees who identify as Māori, uh, gone from uh, just below 4% to now around about 7%, which is uh, a significant achievement given that in the financial services sector, Māori only uh, uh, represent about 2.5% of the workforce, and we've still got some work to do, but we're very pleased with that progress. Um, also, in the economic pillar, um, the digital platforms are a key part of delivering um, cost savings to our customers through the provision of lower rates, as we showed with our residential mortgage uh, product. Um, and it is something that we will see as being part of our sustainability journey is increased digitalization. Moving on to the financial performance, um, a further consequence of COVID has been the impact on the flow of asset growth. As we saw in uh, FY21, in the first half, growth was 2%. Uh, in the second half, it was 15%, producing an overall result of uh, around 8%. And this reflects the ebbs and flows created by lockdowns, uh, exacerbated by uneven supply chain um, logistics. In motor, for example, uh, the financing of motor vehicles, 
Monthly lending flows varied by plus or minus 25 to 35%, where in the low months we were literally waiting for ships to come in and deliver cars to the market. This lumpiness has at times placed strain on our staff working remotely, and I'm very grateful for the tolerance and commitment of our people during this time. Working from home has become a reality due to COVID, and it can be a very effective uh, tool which we will use and continue to use employing in all circumstances. Some tasks are better suited uh, to remote environments. It has also allowed us to reduce our reliance on expensive uh, real, uh, real estate um, rental space. But it has its limitations, particularly with our rangatahi, our youth, where that uh, mentoring you get from close proximity is hard to replicate in a, in a virtual environment. The lumpiness in lending has also impacted on our reporting, as we saw last year. Um, we, do, we no longer can expect to see linear flows of business coming through month to month. Um, however, despite that and despite the lockdowns, as the Chair said, we still expect to achieve a result uh, within the guidance range of 93 to 96 million. And in terms of individual business units, just to give you an update on how we're tracking this year, uh, since the financial year, uh, reverse mortgage growth continues, if you like, business than usual. It's COVID proof in both countries. Uh, and in particular on that, I'd like to pay tribute to the resilience and dedication of our Melbourne-based employees who have enjoyed, endured over 260 days in, in lockdown. Uh, motor and asset finance are doing well, despite that uneven supply that I refer, referred to. And we're very pleased with the growth we're getting in our, our recently launched uh, residential mortgage book. As I said, it's passed through 100 million, uh, and we're now hitting uh, in excess of $30 million per month. Finally, I'd also like to join the chair in thanking uh, Sir Christopher for his contribution over the years. Um, as one of the foundation uh, directors, uh, he shared the vision uh, of what was possible and helped mould Heartland to be what, he, what it is now. He's a man of uh, tireless enthusiasm and goodwill, uh, a wonderful mentor, a wonderful um, uh, provider of, of, of sound advice. And uh, I'm very pleased at the next stage of this journey, he will continue to be involved as Komatua. Uh, this is a new role uh, and one which we um, have designed to reflect our uh, our, our commitment to relations with Tangata Whenua um, and, and Tikana, um, and also to provide some cultural leadership internally for our rangatahi. Uh, Sir Christopher is of Ngāti Paru descent, and in 2012 he was Māori Businessman of the Year. And I know that we will look forward to uh, the guidance and mentoring that he can give to uh, particularly our, our younger staff, and I um, am pleased to see we will benefit from the continuation of his mana whakitipu. So finally, I'd like to thank all of our Heartland people for their exceptional efforts. Um, it has been a challenging year, as I said, but also a year of opportunities, and we have grasped those opportunities and we have met those challenges. Um, we have been blessed with um, uh, very good support from our, uh, our board and, and senior management, um, and um, I uh, thank them all for your long hours and, and contribution. Um, I'd also like to thank our shareholders, uh, He mana wa whenua, he mana tangata, ko Heartland tene. You, we are Heartland, so thank you very much. I'll now hand back to the, uh, the chair. Thank you, Jeff, for that address. Um, we are now opening the meeting up for questions. I advise that Graham Edwards from KPMG, the company's auditors, is present online today and is available to answer any questions relevant to the conduct of the audit and the preparation and content of the auditor's report for the year ended 30 June 2021. Shareholders who wish to ask a question on Heartland's performance strategy or operations can submit their questions, as I've said, on the online meeting platform, and I will aim to ensure their, uh, those questions, as many of them as possible, are addressed. Any comments, questions or matters raised for discussion during the meeting must be relevant to the business of the meeting. If you have matters you would like to raise as a customer, please submit those online and we'll endeavour to respond after the meeting. Shareholders were also invited to submit questions prior to the meeting. 
One of those we received was a comment relating to the location of the meeting and a request that it be held in Christchurch next year. Of course, it was planned to possibly hold this annual meeting at the new Christchurch Convention Centre. Unfortunately, due to delays with construction and COVID-19 alert levels, we had to defer that meeting to an online meeting. So rest assured to the questionnaire, we'll consider Christchurch and planning next year's meeting. I'll now move as to whether there are any other questions that we have received while Jeff and I have been talking. Uh, yes, we've received a few questions online. Jeff, the first one here uh, relates to uh, NIM. How a quick, how would a quickly upward interest rate environment impact Heartland's NIM and credit risk this year and onward? Well, I think I should have asked the Chief Executive to respond to that. <laughs> Jeff. Yes, so we've we seen the return of inflation and with it we've seen interest rates move up. So um, what we endeavour to do is to ensure that our, um, our net interest margin stays constant by making um, the extent we can, uh, that our lending yields and our deposit yields move uh, in line with each other. Uh, that's easier to say um, in theory than it, than it is to, to achieve in practice, but that's uh, our expectation. Uh, in terms of the issue on risk, I think um, what we are seeing so far is no increase in any risk coming through in the books, given that there has been an increase in interest rates and reflecting that interest rates still at a uh, historically very, very low rate. Thank you. Uh, the next question here relates to dividends. This year's dividend payout ratio reached around 75% of net profit. Does this already completely restore to normal level or still has some impact by the restriction of RBNZ's dividend freezing policy? Okay, well, I think the RBN um, restriction will lapse in March next year, as I understand it, currently. Um, in terms of dividend, we'll determine dividends based on the net profit after tax each year and subject to maintaining a prudent level of capital for its needs. Heartland's capital needs will vary from time to time, depending on a range of factors. So um, if you look in the past, we've been able to gradually increase our dividends each year as we grow our profits, and that broad trend will continue, I think, um, and we'll be able to pay out ratio aligning with historical levels. The uh, next question here uh, relates to our ASX listing. Uh, Heartland listed on the ASX uh, recently and incurred a significant amount of cost at that time. What benefit has Heartland derived from this? Yeah, I, I think um, I'll have a crack at that and Jeff might want to make a comment. Um, the cost is not that significant um, for listing because it was a um, well executed listing. The benefit of us being listed um, Certainly the ASX tra transactions are thin, but we now have a scale business there and reverse mortgages of a billion dollars. Um, and we are on the lookout for other opportunities in Australia as we have disclosed. So I think it's an appropriate thing for us to do looking forward. Um, but Jeff, you might like to comment if there's anything else. Yeah, no, I, one thing I'd say is that um we have always been um, encouraged by investment bankers to uh, seek out uh, Australian shareholders, institutional shareholders. Before we were listed, we might go to Sydney and have um, four meetings in Sydney uh, and maybe two in Melbourne. Now, well, when we could go uh, pr prior to COVID or when the bubble w w was in place, you know, if we went to Australia, we would have a full card for a week of, of appointments. So that was the difference of being having the dual listing was we're now on the radar screen of uh, a large, a much larger group of Australian institutions. And just to be clear, the ASX listing is under the foreign exempt format. So again, the costs are minimal. And I think the benefits and the upside um, 
are important for us to focus on. Next question. Uh, this next one relates to uh, COVID, uh, I think COVID overlay. Is the group still retaining a COVID financial provision or has this been released? No, it hasn't been released. We've got an overlay of um, 9.6 million, which we introduced last year. It hasn't been touched, um, but you know, we're living in volatile times and um, uncertainties. The Delta, we never anticipated the Delta virus coming along. so. It's appropriate, we think, that we keep and retain it at this stage in case things worsen. And I think um, the regulators are also like to see it there as well. So at this stage, we will still retain it for the current year and review it at the end of the year. Uh, and the final question at this stage, which areas of the business do you see as the growth drivers in the medium term? Jeff. Um, what we expect to see is that continuation of good growth that we have seen in reverse mortgages in both countries um, and, uh, and motor, of course, continuing, uh, but possibly you know, uh, the, the growth being lumpy, but on a year-to-year -year basis, we, we expect to see those sorts of um, um, historical experiences to, to continue, if not improve. Um, and then alongside that, we've got the sort of the, the, like the newer lines which are now coming through and, and starting to do some of the heavy lifting, such as asset finance, which has grown really well, and we expect to see a lot more of that. We're very positive about asset finance. It's really exposed to the infrastructure, transportation, and agri sectors here, which are all very um, active at the moment. Uh, and then, of course, we've got from a, you know, a, a zero base, a low base of uh, the residential mortgages, we've, we, we expect to see that. Uh, that growth rate to continue uh, very strongly. So, There are no further online questions at this time. <clears throat> Thank you. There are no further online questions that have been received. So uh, with that case, we'll move on to the business of the meeting, um, unless there are any further questions. Um, Voting. So, as I've said, we'll now move to the formal business of the meeting, which is to vote on resolutions set out in the notice of meeting. As mentioned earlier, if you are attending the meeting online, you can cast your vote using the electronic voting card received when your online registration was validated. Turning to the business, the first item for resolution is the re-election of Ali Cummerford to the Board of Heartland Group Limited. Good morning all. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today in support of my standing for re-election as a Director of Heartland Group Holdings. I've been a Director of Heartland Group Holdings since uh, 2018 in November when it was first formed. And I also chair the Audit and Risk Committee and have been doing so since that time. My journey with Heartland began in 2017 when I joined the Board of Heartland Bank, and I've continued in that role till late 2020 uh, and then stepped down from that role so that I could dedicate time to my role um, on the group board and particularly to making sure that I was acquitting myself well with the, as chairing the Audit and Risk Committee. Um, my governance capability stems from 35 years um, plus in a financial services career in both executive and non-executive uh, capacities. Uh, I had a number of executive uh, C-suite roles across a number of different companies that operated out of Australia, New Zealand and globally. Um, I've been extremely fortunate to be able to bring uh, those executive capabilities and, the, and now my non-executive capabilities to my governance roles, uh, I think for the benefit um, of the companies on which I serve. I do serve on a number of different uh, boards at the moment in other governance roles. Um, that includes mortgage broking, uh, it includes insurance, and it also includes more recently uh, as a, the chair of an audit and risk for a technology services platform. Uh, I do uh, gain great insights from all of the roles that I play, and I do believe that the knowledge, insights and currency that I gain uh, are something that I bring to Heartland and leverage um, in terms of undertaking the role of, as a director. I'm also very aware that I'm accountable to the board um, and to you as shareholders for making sure I dedicate enough time 
um, to undertaking the role. I believe I do that. Um, I think that is um, something that we're all highly conscious of, particularly um, in the last 18 months or so since the pandemic, uh, because that's been made obviously uh, slightly more difficult um, uh, with travel being prevented um, and lockdowns that we're all experiencing. Um, I think that um, the board has acquitted itself for well and I have really tried to augment uh, time uh, that is spent with management, normally face-to-face, -face, with uh, meetings with uh, finance, risk and audit personnel, um, yes, on a virtual basis, but making sure that we, um, we are staying in touch with the business. While COVID-19 has really presented a lot of challenges um, to us, uh, well, to the whole world, really, um, the tyranny of distance between Australia and New Zealand um, and the need to operate virtually is something that I think we've managed well. I sincerely hope to be uh, able to continue to serve uh, as a director of Heartland Group Holdings for the benefit of the company. And um, like all of you, I guess, I am really looking forward to that time where lockdowns are over, where travel's not restricted um, and face-to-face -face meetings become a reality again. Thanks for your time today. So um, Ellie's background and qualifications were included in the notice of meeting. Ellie stands for re-election with the very full support of the board. The resolution to re-elect Ellie as an ordinary resolution requires approval of a majority being more than 50% of the votes of those shareholders entitled to vote. I move that Ellie Comerford, who retires by rotation, is eligible for re-election, be re-elected as a director of Heartland Group. Are there any questions? No questions on this one. No questions. Thank you. So please mark your intention on your voting card for selecting four against or abstain at item one. Please click submit the vote at the bottom of the voting card to lodge your vote. Thank you. The second item of business is the re-election of Jeff Summerhays to the board of Heartland Group. Details regarding Jeff's background, qualification and experience were included in the notice of meeting. Jeff stands for re-election with the full support of the board the resolution again to re-elect Jeff Summerhays is an ordinary resolution requiring approval by a majority being more than 50% of the votes of those shareholders entitled to vote at the meeting and voting. Jeff will now address the meeting. Good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to address you as shareholders in the context of my nomination for re-election to the board. I've been fortunate to lead several financial services companies in senior executive roles in banking, investments and insurance in both Australia and in New Zealand. More recently, I've been a board member of the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, APRA. As a prudential regulator, you are responsible for the financial soundness of firms. And in this role, I work closely with regulators internationally uh, including the RBNZ in New Zealand. As a regulator, you have a privileged market position in that you see all firms firsthand. You quickly uh, form the ability to benchmark those firms and understand how they sit relative to other firms in the market. I use this lens to assess Heartland when I was approached to join the board. In a short time that I've been a director of Heartland, I've been impressed with Heartland's sense of purpose, strategy, capability, culture, and performance. I'm excited about Heartland's prospects in both New Zealand and in Australia, and I'd be honoured if I was re-elected to the board and will work diligently to further Heartland's success. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I now move that Jeff Summerhays, who retires in accordance with the Constitution and is eligible for re-election, be re-elected a director of the group. Jeff Summerhays has the full support of the board. Are there any other questions? No questions online. No questions. Okay, could you please mark your intention on your voting card by selecting for, against or abstain? Press click submit vote on the bottom of the voting card to lodge your vote. The third item of business is the re-election of Kate Mitchell to the board of Hartland Group. Kate is in Christchurch, not in Australia, so we have her live on screen. 
Details regarding Kate's background, qualifications and experience were included in the notice of meeting. Kate stands for re-election with the full support of the board. The resolution to re-elect Kate is, a, is an ordinary resolution requiring approval by a majority being more than 50% of the votes of those shareholders entitled to vote and voting. Kate will now address the meeting. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Kate Mitchell and I have been a director of Heartland Bank since March 2019 and was recently asked to join the Heartland Group Board as well. I am a shareholder in Heartland Group. My professional background is in investment banking, advising large corporate clients on market and credit risk management. After moving to New Zealand in 2014, I embarked on a new career as a business consultant and professional director. I am currently on a number of boards in New Zealand in addition to Heartland, including Christchurch International Airport, Farmright, Link Engine Management and also Chair of the New Zealand Merino Company. I am drawn to ambitious growth orientated companies who like to challenge the status quo, so I was delighted to be given the opportunity to work with Heartland, for which that description is very apt. I celebrate the many initiatives that Heartland takes and has taken which differentiate us from the mainstream, including our strategy to operate in and grow market segments where we can be either the best or the only provider, our mission to deliver frictionless, efficient and cost-effective banking services, our leadership in promoting diversity and inclusion, and in particular our, our ongoing commitment to the Manawa Ako Internship Programme, which has supported 76 Māori interns over the past four years to develop their skills and experience in banking. And finally, our quest to set high standards for how we engage with all of our stakeholders, as demonstrated by our recent recognition amongst NZX companies for ethical leadership. The combination of these attributes with our track record of delivering robust financial outcomes, in my view, positions Heartland extremely well for the future. I'm excited to have the opportunity to continue to bring my experience in banking, risk management and business consultancy to Heartland and very much look forward to working with Jeff and his management team to execute on the opportunities that lie ahead. I would be grateful for your ongoing support for my directorship of Heartland and I'm very happy to take any questions you may have. No questions online. No questions, Kate. Um, I move that Kate Mitchell, who retires in accordance with the Constitution and is eligible for re-election, be re-elected a director of Heartland Group. As I've said, Kate stands with, for re-election with the very full support of the board. Are there, are there no further questions? Please mark your intention on your voting card by selecting for, against or abstain. Please click submit vote on the bottom of your voting card to lodge your vote. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, all votes will be by way of a poll and that will be announced to the NZX probably um, tomorrow, I think, or maybe this afternoon, if there is time. Resolution four is the auditor's remuneration. This is to record the automatic reappointment of KPMG as the company's auditor and to pass the following resolution. I move that the board be authorised to fix the remuneration of Heartland's auditor, KPMG, for the year ending 30 June 2022. Are there any questions online? No questions. No. There's no questions online. Um, so we'll move to voting again. Um, I've, I've moved the resolution. Please mark your intention on your voting card by selecting for, against or abstain at item one. Please click the submit vote at the bottom of the voting card and lodge your vote. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal business of the meeting. You should now submit your votes. Voting will be open until the close of the meeting. The results of the poll will be advised to the NZX and ASX after the conclusion of the meeting. There is now an opportunity for any matters which may be properly brought before the annual meeting to be considered. Are there any other matters or questions shareholders wish to raise? No, Nicola? I've got one question here.
We have uh, one further question uh, which relates to sustainability. And the question is, does the continued financing of motor vehicles go hand in hand with the group's commitment to reduce its own internal carbon footprint? Has the group considered expanding its financing of green fleets, such as electric bikes or trucks, for example? We do, we do and have considered financing um, electric cars, definitely, and we're moving our, uh, that way in our own um, fleet. Um, Jeff, would you like to make any further comment? Uh, maybe Chris Flood could um, provide more colour on that. Chris is Chief Executive of Heartland Bank. Chris is the Chief Executive of Heartland Bank, but also oversees the motor business. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Heartland does finance a number of uh, electric vehicles, and in fact, some of our distributors uh, produce a number of uh, electric vehicles now. So it is very much in our future. The issue, uh, as many commentators will know in New Zealand, the actual number of electric vehicles uh, coming into the country is, is relatively modest at this time. But I see that continuing to grow, and Heartland looks forward to being uh, a part of that not just electric vehicles, but also uh, other uh, green uh, projects that uh, w we are pursuing right at the minute. So it's it is very much part of our uh, plan, uh, our financing plan, and uh, you'll continue to see that play a bigger part of our uh, receivables as, as time progresses. Any further questions, Nicola? No further questions. No, thanks. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of Heartland's 2021 annual shareholders meeting. Accordingly, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you all for your attendance and participation here today. It's appreciated, and I'm sorry we cannot share a drink with you today as, as our normal custom after an ASM, but maybe next year in Christchurch, hopefully. So thank you very much.